Hello everyone. My name is Babarisa Olaiwala. I'm here to make mathematics understandable as possible. This video is on differential calculus. Calculus. Literally, the word calculus refers to any body of mathematics that requires computation or calculation. Calculus can be traced to ancient times. It came through the calculation of volumes and areas, which is documented in the Egyptian Moscow papyrus. A trapezoidal rule algorithm was applied by Babylonians in the astronomical observations of Jupiter. Contributors to calculus a Greek mathematician, Eudoxus of Knidos, used the concept of limit in evaluating areas and volumes by breaking them up into an infinite number of recognizable shapes. The heuristics method of Archimedes is akin to the methods of integral calculus. In the late 12th century, the Persian mathematician Sharaf Haldin Haltosi discovered the derivative of cubic polynomials. French mathematician Per de Fema developed an adequacy method for determining maxima, minima, and tangent to various curves that were closely related to differentiation. Calculus is known in its early history as infinitesimal calculus. As a mathematical discipline, Focus on limits, continuity, derivatives, integrals, and infinite series. English mathematician Isaac Barrow is generally given credit for the early development of infinitesimal calculus, specifically for proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus. At the same time, Japanese mathematician Kowaseki was actively engaged in significant research. Seki's contributions were noteworthy, particularly in the field of determining areas of figures using integrals, which involved extending the method of exception. It was German mathematician Gottfried William Leibniz who gave the new discipline its name, calculus. Sir Isaac Newton, an English mathematician, called his version of calculus fluxions. Calculus is divided into two, differential calculus and integral calculus. We can bridge the two by a fundamental theorem of calculus. Differential calculus, that is what we are going to consider now. Differential calculus studies the rate of change of one quantity compared to another. If two quantities or variables x and y are so related such that to every value of x there is a corresponding that means a unique value of y is called a function of x often written as y of s or f of x. If f prime exists at a point x then f has a derivative at x. However, if f prime exists at every point that is everywhere in the domain of f, then f is differentiable. Differentiation is the process of finding a derivative. Equations involving derivatives are termed differential equations. Nowadays, derivatives can be obtained from slopes. The slope of a linear equation y equals mx plus b is constant, that is the steepness is the same everywhere. Now let's consider uh, this graph, y equals uh, mx plus b. Now we have a car that moves on a straight line. Therefore, the difference in the values of uh, x is called the change in x. And the this difference between the values of uh, y is the change in y and our b is at the y axis. So the slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. 
or we can write it better like this, changing y over changing x, which is given in this format. So this little triangle means the delta. Geometrically, the derivative at the point is the slope of the target line to the graph of the function at that point, provided that the derivative exists and is defined at that point. The derivative of f of x at the point s equals a is the slope of the tangent to a f of a. If the equation is not linear, then the slope of the graph can be obtained by the tangent line, that is, a line that touches a particular point of the curve. Let's consider this graph. For this, we see that the line is not a straight line, so it's not linear. But we can get our point out. We can get the point out P1, P2, P3, P4, and then possibly P5. We can see that the equation is y equals a x to the power of n plus b. If n is 1, it becomes a, a linear. But for this, it is not a linear, and therefore we use the tangent line. Slope equals f of x plus change in x minus f of x divided by change in x. The slope of the second line gets closer to the slope of the tangent line as change in s gets to zero. Therefore, limit change in x tends to zero. f of x plus change in s minus f of x over change in s. We can then rewrite it in this format that uh, the f prime x equals limit change in x tends to zero. f of x plus change in x minus f of x divided by change in x. And then this implies the first principle or the delta now, if f of x equals y, then the derivative can also be written as these following derivative operators. Therefore, the first one is called the Leibniz notation, the second is called the Newton's notation, the third one is called the Lagrange notation, and the last one is called the Euler's notation. Example 1. Using first principle, find the derivative of y equals x to the power of minus 2. And x to the power of minus 2 can be written as 1 over x squared. Using the limit formula, we are going to have the y ds equals limit change in x tends to 0, 1 over x plus change in x all squared minus 1 over x squared divided by change in x. We should know that we got this from the limit formula. When we substitute that into 1 over x squared, so we are going to have 1 over x plus change in x all square. Now, the next is that we need to express that and our 1 over change in x plus x all square is going to be 1 over uh, x square plus 2x change in x plus change in x all square. Then we are going to subtract it from 1 over x square that's minus, divided by change in x. Now, let's express this one further. If we do that, we are going to have this. And after that, we are going to uh, expand that by using the minus sign to uh, multiply everything, design inside. But the beauty of uh, first principle is that something must cancel out by minus. So x squared will cancel out minus x squared. Now, the y dx equals this. But if we look at the numerator very well, we see that there's a common factor there, which is change in x. So we bring the change in x out so that it can able to divide the change in x in the denominator. Now, let's divide that. So when we divide that, the remaining will be this. Now, the next thing we need to do is that we are going to replace change in s by zero because as change in s tends to zero, so we are going to have this. Now, after having this, we express it further and ensure that we have minus 2x divided by x squared into bracket x squared. Then we multiply it, the denominator, and then we have to cancel out the common uh, factor out of the numerator and denominator. So we will be left with minus 2 over x to the power of 3. So that is our answer for that. Or you can express it further by saying minus 2 x to the power of minus 3. Differentiation rules. Number one, derivative of pass or general principle. If you give me y because a x to the power of n, then the y prime becomes the n comes down, which is n, multiplied by the a x, but you take away one from the n from the power. 
Now, let's consider an example. Example 2, differentiate y equals x to the power of 4 plus 5x to the power of 3 minus 4x squared plus 7x minus 2. Now, the y prime becomes, for the x to the power of 4, the 4 comes down, then we take away 1 from it. For the 5x to the power of 3, the 3 comes down, which multiply the 5x, then 3 minus 1, that is the power. Then, for the minus 4x squared, the 2 comes down, it multiply the 4x, then we take away 1 from the power, from its power. Now, for the 7x, well, it's still the same, but 1 is the power. So, 1 comes down, and then we multiply by the 7x, uh, 1 minus 1, that is for the power. Now, for the minus 2, is a constant, so it becomes 0. Now, what happens is that we should know that n, uh, the derivative of a constant is usually 0. Now, y prime equals, when you try to multiply everything together, you will have, have 4x to the power of 3 plus 15x to the power of 2 minus 8x to the power of 1 plus 7x to the power of 0 minus 0. But anything that raised to the power of 0 is usually 1. So we can express it in this format, and this is the answer. So, higher order derivative is simply differentiate the function in n times where n is greater or equal to 2. If n is 2, we say the second order. If n is 3, we say the third order, and so on. Now, example 3. Find the second derivative of f of t equals t to the power of 3 minus 1 over 2 t squared plus t minus 1. Now, let's rewrite it and find the derivative of it. So, find the derivative that is f prime t. Now, the 3 comes down. And then we have t to the power of 3 minus 1, which is the rules for differentiation. Then the 2 of the second one comes down and it multiplies the half, then t to the power of 2 minus 1. Then for ordinary t, it is 1 times t to the power of 1 minus 1. Then the 1, when we differentiate, it becomes 0. Okay, let's explain this one further. And we have 3t squared minus 1t power of 1 plus 1t power of 0 minus 0. Okay, we can see express it again as 3t squared minus 1t power of 1 plus 1. And let's differentiate the second time since we are looking, we are finding the second derivative. Uh, the 2 comes down and becomes um, 2 times 3t to the power of 2 minus 1. Then the 1 becomes 1 times 1 to the t to the power of 1 minus 1. And then the ordinary one when differentiate becomes 0. So finally, if we express that that is f prime prime t becomes 60 minus 1. Consider the third one, product rule. It implies product of two functions. The y dx equals u dv dx plus v du dx. So we should know that y equals uv. Let's consider um, the fourth example. So we want to differentiate y equals s k plus 1 to bracket x fourth plus 1 with respect to x. Okay. Now, let y equals to uv, where u equals s t plus 1 and v equals s to the power of 4 plus 1. Now, let's differentiate the u. The u dx equals 3x squared. And let's differentiate the v. The v dx equals 4x cubed. Now, let's substitute those values, what we have gotten, into the formula. So, we have this. Now, we can expand that properly and we are going to get um, this one out. So we can then collect like times and add it up. The answer will be 7s to the power of 6 plus 7s to the power of 3. Quotient's rule. It considers rationalization of two functions. And the formula is given as v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared. And we should note that y equals u over v. Now, let's consider example 5. Differentiate y equals exponent um, 2x over minus 4x squared with respect to x. Now, we let u to be exponential 2x and the v to be minus 4x squared. Now, we differentiate the u, which gives us 2 exponential 2x, and then we differentiate the v, which gives minus 8x. Now, substituting this into the formula, we are going to have this. And then simplify it further, we are going to have this. And then the final answer will be exponent 2x bracket x minus minus x plus 1 over 2x cubed. Chain rule. It is useful for composite function that is inner and outer. And the formula is given as the u dx multiplied by dy du. We should know that y equals u to the power of n. Let's consider example 6. 
we want to differentiate this function with respect to x. Now, we we'll let u to be s to the power of 6 minus 4 and the y to be um, u to the power of 3. Now, we differentiate the u, which will give us the u to x equals 6x to the power of 5. And then we also differentiate the y, which will give us y du equals 3u to the power of 2. Now, let's substitute this into the formula. We are going to have this. And we know what our u is. So we replace that and we are going to get 18x to the power of 5 into bracket x to the power of 6 minus 4 all square. Derivatives of exponential, logarithmic, and trigonometric functions. N number 6. The derivative of c to the power of ax, where c and a are both constant, is a c to the power of as natural log of c. That is the derivative. Let's consider an example, example 7. If y equals 5 to the power of 3x, then the der its derivative is 3 into bracket 5 to the power of 3x, natural log of 5. Now, let's consider number 7. The derivative of exponential ax is a exponential ax. Example 8. If y equals exponential minus 2x, then its derivative becomes minus 2 exponential minus 2x. There are others also, but let's talk about number 8. The derivative of log x base c is 1 over x natural log of c. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. The derivative of x to the power of x is x to the power of x into bracket 1 plus natural log of x. The derivative of cos x is minus sin x. The derivative of sine s is cos x. The derivative of tan s is sec square x. The derivative of arc sine x is 1 over square root of 1 minus s square. The derivative of arc cos s is 1 minus 1 over square root of 1 minus s square. And the derivative of arc tan x is minus 1 over 1 plus x square. Yes. Now, differentiate the following functions with respect to x. Here we have up to 14 questions to solve, and they are going to be displayed here. If you like this video, please click on the like and subscribe button for more videos. And don't forget to drop your comment below.